Okay, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to Unleashed Community Dramas 10 Tips Workshop. Okay, so guys, I know a lot of you are uh, turning up to the read through for uh, the, uh, the script, the screenplay uh, later on, but we are carrying on with our um, basically workshop to help you uh, get into character. So last week we did 10 tips on learning your lines. This week, oh my goodness, 10 tips on characterization. Can you see that? 10 tips on characterization. So guys, what I thought would be really good, would just if you go through a whole load of stuff that's gonna help you uh, really find your character. Um, because I'm conscious that a lot of people have not done this before. So obviously in terms of the process, in terms of learning your lines, we went through that last week. This week we are going to be looking at characterization. Now characterization is really important because this is where you actually work out how you're gonna act, how you're gonna play the character. And uh, the first one I've put, the first out of 10, um, 10 tips, is that you've got to know what your character is. Now that sounds really basic, but basically, you, why, you've got to ask yourself, why, why is my character in the scene? What is their backstory? You know, how do they fit into the plot? Are they are a hero or are they a villain? You know, what do the words reveal about them? I think before you actually start really learning your lines, we would have done a read through like we're doing today and you would have established exactly how your uh, character fits into the plot. You know, is he one of the main, is it he or she one of the main protagonists? And what do they bring to the storyline? You know, where do they fit in? And this will have a massive impact on how you play the character. Now, the second thing, number two, second tip, is also finding the voice. I think it's really important when you're playing a character, you've got to find the voice. Now, my goodness, over the years, I've played so many different characters and I've played a lot of characters that have different types of voices. Now, when I'm talking about voices, I'm not necessarily talking about the accent. We're going to come on to that in a second. We're talking about the way in which you deliver the lines. You know, are they a nervy character? Are they an eccentric character? Are they a really confident character? Are they a bully? Do they walk into the room and people feel afraid of them? Do they walk into the room and they are really winsome? They win over the whole room. You know, so the voice is how you deliver the lines in terms of, you know, what sort of character are they? Are they a likable character? Are they a really horrible character? And the way in which you deliver those lines, you know, will, will actually create that character. So not only do you need to know how they fit into the plot, but you've got to know exactly what their voice is. Now, when we're talking about voice also, it, a lot of this will depend on where the context of the play is, you know, where it's set, where the, the main action happens. Now, I mean, for about the first 20 years of me doing stuff on stage, most of it was in musicals. Uh, a, a lot of it was in musicals. And I, my goodness, I played so many lead roles. And invariably, they were all, <laughs> they were all American characters. And so I, I very, very quickly picked up an American accent, you know, and a lot of that is by, you know, watching telly, you know, friends, all that sort of stuff, you know, that was on the telly, you know, you'd pick up sort of, and specific uh, American accents. So some, you know, I was in Tennessee Williams, film, um, Tennessee Williams play, and it was all set in the deep south. So the American accent was very different to uh, New York. Now I've got a few pictures here. Here we go. I just thought it'd be a bit of fun as we've been uh, celebrating live theatre. Uh, oh my goodness, when I first started out, I was in what Kiss Me Kate, I played the lead in that. And then High Society, here we go, High Society. This is me playing Mike the Frank Sinatra character. Oh, look with the lovely Paul Zapel. Can you see that? Uh, that's going back in the day. Here we are. This was the amateur West Southwest premiere of Annie, where I played Rooster, Rooster Hannigan. Uh, great part, really fab part. Uh, oh my goodness, South Pacific. Here we are, Lieutenant Joe Cable. Uh, oh, hilarious thing about that. I was so so thin at the time. I remember my wife was sat in the audience, and I had to get my top off when um, Liat and I were doing this love scene, and. Um, <laughs> and the woman next to my wife said, oh my goodness, look, he's so thin, you can see all his ribs. Um, here we go, A Little Shop of Horrors, that was the Northcott Theatre Company, again, American accent. And, um, and then this one, oh, I love this part. Okay, this was when I played Nicely Nicely. Now, when I went for the audition for this, I really wanted the part of Sky Masterson. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, basically, uh, because uh, one of the show-stopping uh, songs in it is uh, Sit Down, You're Rocking the Boat, and it goes right up to a top eight, and uh, I've got a very, very high um, tenor voice, and uh, so I was given the part nice and nice, which at the time I was a bit disappointed about, to be fair, but it was, oh, it was such a laugh. It's such a comic role. And there's me in the fat suit uh, with the lovely Chris Kiel, uh, and Andy Killen, oh my gosh, back in the day. 
uh, guys and dolls. Um, so American accents, but um, it doesn't matter what sort of accent you've got. You know, um, it is the accent that will that will actually bring the character to life. Uh, I played a couple of Cockney characters. Here we go. Look at this. Back in the day, oh my goodness, Wally Wilkins. This was like uh, Merry England, where I played like a sort of a Cockney troubadour in the court of Elizabeth the uh, First. Weirdly, uh, I don't know whether you saw the Crown. Uh, Prince Charles, when he was doing his elocution in the Crown, he quoted it. Uh, uh, the song, the famous fish song from Merry England. And the dragon will come when he hears the song at a minute or two to two to two, a minute or two to two to two, at a minute or two to two. And, uh, and then I was in uh, also um, the Southwest amateur premiere of Me and My Girl playing um, Bill Snipson. Oh my gosh, that was, uh, that was back in the day. Uh, there we are in the old tap shoes. Um, fantastic show. Oh, fantastic show. Me and My Girl. Um, this is me getting seduced by, uh, here we are, <laughs> Lady Jacqueline. Hilarious. Um, but um, the point I'm making is that actually when you, um, when you find the uh, accent, okay, you've got to really work on it. Um, I remember when I was, um, I was in a play called uh, Dancing at Lunasa, which was a lovely play. Uh, here we go. This is uh, The Toads. Uh, Brian Friel. It's a wonderful, wonderful play, beautiful writer, Irish writer. And he wrote this lovely play about these sisters in um, Southern Ireland. And uh, the whole play, very difficult play to put on. Um, and um, I played the only character who was Welsh. I played the sort of love interest who gets one of the sisters pregnant. And so I had to, I had to play a, with a Welsh accent. And um, at the time, um, there was this guy called John Clamp, I think he was, who was a critic in the local paper. And oh my gosh, he was just, he was brutal. You know, we went from Malcolm Hazel, who was the local critic, who used to say this thing, everything was lovely, it was a wonderful production, you were marvellous. To so this critic, this guy, John Clamp, he wrote in one, um, oh, the, 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 the lead girl was too fat for the role and she couldn't sing. Uh, and um, it's the only bad review I've ever had. And that was because he, um, he thought that my Irish accent was meant to be Irish, but of course it was a Welsh accent. And I think he said something like, Martin Harris's Irish accent was like Alan Wicker. <laughs> I'll tell you, I was mortified at the time. But uh, what I did was, and this is a tip, okay, is that if you have, if you are going to play it with an accent, you need to get someone to help you. At the time, I had a good friend, Dowie Reynolds, who was uh, really uh, had a great Welsh accent. And he really helped me go over it. And if you go on the internet, actually, there are, um, if, you, if you think in our, in our film that we're making now, there are quite a few accents, quite a few posh accents. Um, when I played, um, uh, here we are, C.S. Lewis in uh, Shadowlands, uh, I had to play sort of real intellectual. And so I had to put on a real posh aristocratic accent. And also some of the characters in our, in our screenplay uh, are very aristocratic. And the way in which there's a certain turn of phrase, the way in which the vowels are said, they are the things that are gonna bring it to life. So, um, so basically, if you have an accent, you really need to do your homework. And you can go online, there are lots of things like, there's a Devon accent. Obviously, the way in which some of our lines are written, they are clearly, um, clearly written as in the Devon accent dialect. Uh, the next thing is number four, Tip number four is if you, uh, if you look in your text, is there something in the text that gives, uh, gives a clue to the phys uh, physical attribution that, uh, that is gonna help bring the character alive? You know, uh, you know I like, like John, your character is dying of consumption. So obviously he's an invalid, he's come to Torbay, you know, as an invalid to recover. So obviously he's dying. So that's gonna have a massive impact on the way in which you play that role. Uh, in terms of the physicality of the role. You know, has he got a limp? Does he need a stick? That sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> I remember um, when I played uh, Nicely Nicely, I mean, I had to wear a fat suit. And in terms of, because I was so thin at the time, it's a, tw I've, twice I've played characters that have been really overweight. Uh, Toady in Wind in the Willows and uh, Nicely Nicely, and I had to wear a fat suit. But you know, the way in which people who are really overweight, I mean, uh, really obese walk is very, very different. The way in which they move their limbs, the way they move their head is totally different. So the physicality of that character obviously needs to come into the way in which you play it. Uh, now the next thing, okay, this is my fifth tip, is that you need to consciously draw an emotional arc of the scene. Now, what do I mean by that? Basically, every single character in, uh, in, 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 in a scene, 
or in a play will go on an emotional journey. They'll go on an emotional journey. So they won't be the same character at the beginning as they perhaps are at the end. You know, something would have happened in the action to have actually changed them. Uh, but even within a scene, you know, they can walk into the scene and they're happy. Someone says something, they get upset, then they get cross and then they leave. So the emotional arc of that is happy, upset, angry, you know, sort of, and then, um, you know, sulking. So uh, I do this a lot with my um, music um, students, uh, particularly for singing, is that in a piece of music or even with piano, I get them to write out the uh, dynamic journey that a piece of music will take. And the dynamic journey will be, you know, is it soft? It's not soft and it gets louder. Then there's a crescendo. Then there's a, a climax. Then it comes down. It's back to piano. Then perhaps a diminuendo. And, and, and also, you know, in terms of how it makes you feel, how the music makes you feel, it's the same with acting. But you know, you you, you need to you need to be able to uh, define what the uh, what the arc of your character's emotional uh, scene is, and that will help you uh, with how you deliver your lines. Now, number six, really practical. You need to learn your lines as soon as possible. Nobody starts acting until they put their book down. So you need to really get rid of your book. You need to get rid of your book. In terms of your characterization, you are not going to really get into character until you put your book down. So you need to learn your lines. Um, Number six, uh, no, sorry, number, yeah, number seven, number seven, um, is there something about the way in which they dress, okay, that will bring your character to, to life? Now, this is really important. Um, you know, it might be a haircut, a completely different haircut. It might be the way in which they wear their clothes. It might be something that's really out of character, a different wig or facial hair. And guys, can I just say to you, it's really important at this point in the uh, process, you start to uh, grow your sideburns. Obviously, our uh, film is set in the 1850s. So, you know, longer hair. They wouldn't have short back and sides. Um, you know, so start to grow your hair. I remember when I was in uh, Man Four Seasons, I let my hair grow for about four months. So it was really quite long because it had to fit the character. Uh, I've been in uh, 1930s stuff where... Um, you know, you have your hair cut really, really short. I mean, I think if you look here, this is me in um, Shadowlands. I mean, look at my hair. Oh my gosh, look at my hair. It's so, so short, so short. Uh, but the clothes, you know, the clothes and the glasses. And uh, obviously he was a bit of a chain smoker, C.S. Lewis. So I was constantly lighting up a cigarette. And that's the next thing. Is, is there a prop or is there something that can enhance your character? I remember when I played uh, Nicely Nicely, one of the little tips, the guy who'd, um, who was directing it, um, he'd actually been in, on tour in Guys and Dolls. And he'd actually played Nicely Nicely, the guy who was directing it, uh, opposite Barbara Windsor. And uh, he had this great idea that every time uh, Nicely Nicely comes on, he's a massive guy. First of all, I came on, I was eating a baguette. <laughs> every time I came on, the baguette got bigger. So by the end, it was like a sort of real comedy uh, moment. And it got such a laugh every night. This baguette was growing. So by the time I came on, it was like a sort of like three foot baguette that I was holding every time I came on. Uh, I brought a house down, brought a house down. Uh, now, the other thing is also method acting. Talking about method acting. Now, this is what is method acting? Method acting is weird when you really get into your character. We talked about last week about really submerging yourself in the words, you know, putting it on tape, listening to it when you go to sleep, listening to it when you're doing other stuff. Uh, try to go through um, a morning where you consciously act out your character. OK, so basically what you do is you 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 walk through your life in character. <laughs> Um, back in the 90s, uh, for about eight years, I uh, worked for a, a professional murder mystery company, Candlelight Theatre Company. Great fun, really fun. Every Friday, Saturday night, we'd go out on t in teams uh, to, theater, to um, hotels across the southwest, and we'd put on these murder mysteries. And the great thing about it, and the thing that I learned, was this whole thing of improvisation, whereby you are given a character, you don't have any words, but you're given the action that you've got to act out. And so, you know, at the drinks, this is what's going to happen. In the, um, in the starter, this is what's going to happen and main course is what's going to happen. You just improvise and you interact with the punters. But it was really good um, discipline to actually for improvisation because you had to stay in character and you had to interact with the general public as that character. You had no words, you just had to uh, improvise. And that's a really good way of trying to get into character. The last thing of all I would say is, um, is um, try and own the character. Try and own the character. I. Um, uh, when I played uh, 
Toady in, in Wind of the Willows, oh gosh, about eight, nine years ago. Um, I, I decided that I would play it uh, really for laughs and I would really up the ante in terms of the, <laughs> the comedy side of it. And I decided to play it like Rick Mail. So it was very, so I put on this voice, you know, ooh, and I did all these ridiculous facial expressions, but I made the character mine. I mean, I'd seen Wind of the Willows. It was the Alan Bennett um, National Theatre production that we did. Uh, really great script, full of laughs, great family show, really fun. Um, but what I did was I made it my own. And I suppose what I'm saying is that just because of how your words are written on the page, just because you know what the scenario is, the backstory and all the rest of it, doesn't mean that you can bring to it something that's really uniquely you. You know, I think it's really fascinating looking at um, different actors and actresses playing the same part. I've seen so many people play Hamlet, and yet so often they're so completely different. Uh, you look at dramas like, you know, The Crown that's on the moment, uh, Gillian Anderson playing Margaret Thatcher. Well, compared to, you know, Meryl Streep, very, very different. The way in which they're played, very, very different. And you can bring something that's very different. So, so guys, I hope this is really helpful. So here we are. I'm just going to do a quick recap of the 10 tips on characterization. Get to know your character. Give them a voice. Do some work on your accent. Is there something in the text that gives away physical attribution? Consciously draw an emotional arc of the scene and really get into the emotional content of what you're portraying. Make sure you learn your lines as soon as possible. Is there something about the way they dress? Is there a prop that could enhance it, like a monocle, a pipe, glasses, hair, the lot? Is there, um, you know, just improvise in character, but doing something completely different? And last of all, make the character your, your own. So guys, I hope this is helpful. I really, really hope this is helpful. Um, I shall see you shortly, but um, thank you for joining us for 10 tips on characterization from Unleashed, Theatre Company.